Fourth point, that's also linked to the points made up to now, is a complicated one. How you tell a story, how you communicate. Lucilla here, working for the Community Media Trust, they put just here and say, no, they've debated for long what messages to communicate around HIV uh, in a way that can contribute to reduce infections, promote treatment, in a way that is different from looking at HIV AIDS as, as, a, as a scare monger thing and so on, but in a way that actually reinforces social mobilization and consciousness in society. That's one example. But the big problem is that there's a powerful language of neoliberal ideology that shapes what the media covers, how it says it. For example, we have a dominant perspective almost in all newspapers, even in the SAPC. The only path for this economy to have to create jobs is through foreign direct investment. There's no serious problem anyway. Yet evidence is available nowadays with Google and all sorts of websites to any media journalist to really actually understand how foreign direct investment, not anywhere in the world, has led to economic growth and to job creation. Community media is even a more dire situation because we do not even have the resources to even undertake the research, which is not immediately available in the public arenas. So there's, a, there's this big challenge of how to construct a story given the powerful ideology of neoliberalism and the story it says. It's only one story for a direct investment, the private sector, and so on, despite overwhelming evidence from across the world of how the, prescri the prescriptions of neoliberalism have not led to any development of the kind that your listeners aspire to. So I think there's a challenge posed by this moment to, to, to community media. How do you break the consensus to manufacture consent? I don't know if that point is clear. Mm. Yeah. The fifth point, I'm just throwing this point as thinking points. The second last point, I'll be, I'll be happy to say that. <laughs> the fifth point has to do with the notion, the concept, the idea of communication, information, the media as a public good. Of course, there is the issue of protection of rights. I'm not, I'm not, when, I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying the state must come in and take over the role of the media or regulate the media in, in, in ways that restrict the freedom of expression. But the mere fact of sheer dominance of production of information and knowledge by powerful <coughs> interests in society undermines the right of the rest to have access to this public good that is communication, that is information, that is the media. Now, I think community media, if it has to look at a long-term perspective of how it constructs itself, I think it's useful to think of information, communication, and the media as a public good. Therefore, what role does community media play in asserting the right of ordinary people to have access to information. Not just access to information, but produce knowledge about themselves, produce information about themselves, produce communication about themselves. There's a very important role that community media has to play in that regard. But also, there's a wonderful opportunity that theoretically exists, whether it's information technology and so on, that makes it possible now for citizen journalism, that's the phrase, that is being used. How do those opportunities that information technology creates, uh, how can those be used in ways that assert the right to information as a public good? Indeed, there's a problem in so far as information technology is still not accessible to ordinary people. I think it is a legitimate struggle of the community media sector to take up access to information technology as an important part of its ongoing perspective, or, or, or perspective as, as well as of its ongoing goals.